Joe in real life. So I had ambitious plans for today that after I bartended until two in the morning, I was gonna get up early and hit the weights and get my squat day in. And I should have known better. That just wasn't gonna happen. Um, I'm, I'm in good shape. I, I like, I feel recovered-ish, but I am exhausted, man. And I ran my ass off last night and we were really busy. I think I did 10 miles on my feet behind the bar. Um, I'm just getting a minimum today, guys. That's it. I'm just getting a minimum. I'm going to do it tomorrow. One of the great, and this is a great advantage of my new plan, is shit doesn't have to happen on certain days. There's plenty of fat on the schedule. Um, and it's awesome. And I'm going to take full advantage today. I'm going to be a turd boy. It's like 100 degrees outside. I got to work all day today, and I got to get out of here soon. But, um... Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little turdy. I'm a little turdy boy, a little a little turd baby. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm just gonna. I think front squats and my minimum, and I'm out. And you can call me a wimp in the comments below. Go ahead. I I agree. I agree with you. Um, but I, I just I don't have it today. I don't, and that's that. And it's okay because my plan allows it. So I'll see you soon. We're going to hit that minimum. All right. Bye. Okay. So this is just front squats building up to my minimum 155, three times speed. The entire workout took me 20 minutes. Add warm ups on there. I was in and out in a crisp 30, 35 minutes. Um, and I'm off to work, man, you know, still on that grind. And weirdly, the front squats felt really good. I could have done my squat workout today, but it makes me really excited for tomorrow because I'm definitely going to have a good squat workout tomorrow. And I think I made a smart choice and I'm happy with it, man. Um, walking around my cul-de-sac right now as I record this, it is hot. I mean, it is blistering hot. I fully expect the trees to be on fire later this afternoon. And uh, yeah, I don't know what else I have to report. Well, actually there is one thing. So the guy training me last night, I'm a little, I feel like this is a confession. I feel like maybe it's even two confessions. Um, he's a proper mixologist. And I, I don't believe in mixologists. I think that's, that's like some pretentious bartender trash to like kind of co-op the world of like fine dining, you know? Chef, a chef is an artist. A mixologist is a grifter and a faker. <laughs> but I actually met one last night and worked closely with one. And I, I gotta say I'm wrong about that. Like... I do think mixologists are rare, but I mean, I met one in the wild and he, he deeply cares about cocktails, like deeply. He is very passionate and very serious. And it was a pleasure to work with him. It was a pleasure to work with somebody that's genuinely passionate about something I have so much contempt for. <laughs> and takes it so seriously, you know? Um, so that was cool. So yeah, I guess my first confession is that, like, um, I didn't believe in mixologists. Um, and yeah, I, I, I forget what the second one is. I didn't believe in them and I was wrong. So I have to, I have to own up to that. I have to, I have to take my licks on that one. I mean, there's at least one. And I got to assume there was more than this one guy. <laughs> um, 10 years of bartending, I never met one before. But boy, this guy, so serious and creative and like genuinely cares about flavors and aromas. Um, it was a hell of a thing, you know? I'm 46 years old, I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that means, right? It's still like I still got fresh little baby eyes sometimes. I still have to see stuff. 
still have to see stuff on the ground to believe it's true. Um, now, of course, I'm a recovering alcoholic, so you'll forgive me if I'm a little prejudiced against mixologists, you know? They, like, literally peddle the drug that tried to kill me, legally, um, and try to fucking artsy-fartsy it up. Um, but I know that that's my prejudice at work in that idea, right? Like, like because I have a bad relationship with this chemical, I, it, I'm superimposing that on somebody's intention. And that's not fair. Like, obviously that's not fair. Um, and I know full well that's not fair, but also my little heart just does it anyway. <laughs> so what do you do about that? I, I mean, uh, you, you like uh, swallow your pride and learn, you know? Spend some time with the cat, which I did. I spent eight hours with him. It was enlightening to the extreme. Um, an absolutely charming man with um, an insane amount of skill. It's something that I wouldn't think a person could be skillful in, you know? Um, he worked with great intensity and great care. And those are the two things I look for in anyone who's passionate about anything. You know, a young cook comes into my kitchen. If they have intensity and can be careful at the same time, I don't care what you're, I don't care what else you can do, you know? Those two things I can work with. Um, you can learn everything else, for sure. So anyway, it's so sunny out, I can't even see the screen, and I have very little idea where I am in this video. But I think I'm racking the 155 right now, or 145. And these front squats felt great. I had 170 easy. I could have even had 185, but I want to save that. I want a really good squat day tomorrow. Um, I sandbagged a little bit today, for sure, you know, but also I could feel worse about it. And my legs have been really heavy from the running, but today they just feel great, man. They just feel great. Uh, so that's it. This is Joe in Real Life. I love you guys.